Good morning, Vault Dwellers. It's Monday, April 15th. And now it's time for another episode of... Do, 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 hey, Minerva! Yay! The warmest of welcomes to my tent, travelers. I'm currently packing up from White Spring, but fret not, for I'll be setting up shop at Foundation next. Mark your calendars. I will arrive on April 22nd and will be there until April 24th. Don't miss the opportunity to peruse my collection of rare schematics and recipes, all offered at a generous 25% discount. Come find treasures untold and equip yourself for the Wasteland's challenges. Some people have been asking in the comments why they should buy plans from me when they can get them from other vendors or from events. I'd like to take a moment and answer that now. Firstly, the randomness of the Wasteland can be unforgiving. Relying on events or daily operations to bestow the specific schematics you seek can be an exercise in futility, taking precious time and resources. My stock, on the other hand, is carefully curated, offering you the exact blueprints you need to enhance your survival and dominance in Appalachia. Secondly, the cost efficiency cannot be overlooked. My prices are consistently 25% lower than what you might find elsewhere, providing substantial savings. This gold remains in your pocket, ready to be used for other crucial investments. Lastly, I bring the convenience of predictability. With my schedule and locations known, you can plan your visits and purchases with precision, ensuring you never miss out on essential schematics to fortify your arsenal or homestead. I gotta say, it don't make much sense to me to go anywhere else when you got the best right in front of you. It's like choosing to drink toxic water when you could have top shelf hooch. You get me? Anyway, I got a joke for you. Why well, don't Scorch use calendars? Because they can't deal with the fallout of missing a date. For the rest of the questions from the last video, please stay until the end when I'll answer them all. On to the list. The Goss Minigun? A marvel of wasteland engineering is the first item I offer. This weapon is a testament to the fusion of pre-war technology and post-apocalyptic ingenuity. Its rapid-fire capability, combined with the high-velocity electromagnetic projectiles it launches, makes it a formidable choice for any scavenger or defender of Appalachia. Beyond its raw power, the Gauss Minigun is highly valued for its modifiability. With the right schematics, one can enhance its accuracy, firing rate, and ammo capacity, tailoring it to various combat situations. Whether you're holding off hordes of feral ghouls or facing down a towering scorch beast, this weapon can be your stalwart ally. It's yours for only 563 gold, which you'll easily recover after clearing out a few houses of their vermin. The next treasures in my assortment are three modifications for the Gauss pistol, each designed to enhance its performance in distinct ways. First, the Aligned Short Barrel, available for 113 gold, improves the weapon's handling and accuracy. This modification is essential for those who find themselves in frequent close-quarter skirmishes, where precision and speed are paramount. Second, the drum magazine, offered for 75 gold, increases the ammunition capacity of the Gauss pistol significantly. This mod is invaluable for extended engagements, allowing you to maintain firepower without the constant need to reload, which in turn keeps you in the fight for longer. Lastly, the refined receiver, priced at 150 gold, boosts the pistol's damage output and hip-fire accuracy. This upgrade is perfect for those looking to maximize their damage per shot, turning the Gauss Pistol into a deadly force against even the most formidable foes. The Gauss Pistol is already a fantastic weapon, and these mods make it even more so. Next we have the Mechanic's Best Friend, a unique tool now available for my collection for 1,333 gold. This isn't just any ordinary weapon, it's a versatile piece of equipment that serves both as a formidable melee weapon and a practical tool for repairs in the field. Crafted with the needs of a wasteland mechanic in mind, this item combines the robustness of a pipe wrench with the lethality of a combat weapon. Its sturdy construction ensures durability under the most challenging conditions, whether tightening bolts or cracking skulls. This tool is a wise investment for anyone who values functionality and self-reliance in the unpredictable environment of Appalachia. How many other plans give you the ability to forge a weapon that's as reliable in combat as it is in fixing a car on a Sunday afternoon? Moving on to the armor category, I have two exceptional mods for the Secret Service Under Armour, the Protective Lining and the Shielded Lining. The Protective Lining, priced at 113 gold, is a mid-tier upgrade that significantly boosts the Under Armour's defensive capabilities. It offers a balanced increase in damage and energy resistance, along with an enhancement to the wearer's endurance and strength. This mod is ideal for adventurers who are starting to face more formidable threats in Appalachia and need a reasonable boost in their defenses without breaking the bank. On the other hand, the Shielded Lining, available for 150 gold, is the apex of Under Armour modification. It provides the highest possible damage and energy resistance, along with substantial increases to various attributes, including endurance, strength, and perception. 
This top-tier upgrade is suited for dwellers who face the harshest conditions and deadliest foes, requiring the utmost in protection and performance enhancements. Choosing between these depends on one's current needs and future plans in the wasteland. The protective lining is an excellent step up for those enhancing their gear, while the shielded lining is for those ready to invest in the best possible Under Armour modifications for peak performance in the most extreme scenarios. If you have the gold to spare, don't skimp. Get the best. I'm also selling the plans for Thorn Armor, one of the most rare and coveted sets in Appalachia. This armor isn't just notable for its defense capabilities. Its unique feature lies in the special bleed damage it inflicts upon attackers. Each piece of the Thorn Armor is imbued with a hazardous material that causes enemies to suffer additional bleeding damage when they strike you in melee combat. This not only deters aggressors but also steadily saps their health, giving you a tactical advantage in close quarters engagements. Acquiring the full set of Thorn Armor enhances this bleed effect, making you a formidable opponent in melee skirmishes, dealing out bleed damage when you attack with a melee weapon. And if that wasn't enough, the armor's material and design are tailored to reduce noise and visibility, making the wearer harder to detect by enemies, both in and out of combat. This stealth bonus is crucial for those who rely on surprise and subtlety, allowing for closer approaches to targets or avoiding confrontation altogether. I overheard an Angry Turtle say a while back that some enemies in the pit were very weak to bleed damage. I don't know if that's still the case, but if it is, you don't want to try to solo the pit without this armor. In fact, that reminds me. This one time I was in this demolished shopping district, right? I spot this fella in thorn armor looking like a walking porcupine. Suddenly this rabble of raiders charges in all guns and no brains, thinking they're going to make quick work of him. But this guy, he's like a shadow, all slick and silent. The raiders, they're trying to circle him, but he's weaving through them like it's nothing. Every time he brushes past, his thorns nick the raiders, and I can see they're not just cut. They're starting to bleed out bit by bit, thanks to that wicked armor. This dance of death keeps going on, and the raiders are getting weaker, more desperate. Finally, the last few raiders corner him near an old rusty car. But this guy, would you believe it? He tosses a homemade grenade at the car, causing an earth-shattering kaboom that wipes out the remaining raiders. Not that they were going to last much longer anyway. I watched him walk away, and I couldn't help but think. In a world gone mad, sometimes the thorns are what keeps you alive. Consider the thorn armor not just as a purchase, but as an investment in your survival. The chest piece is priced at 750 gold, while the four limbs can be acquired for 563 gold each, summing up to a total of 3,002 gold for the full set. The final item I will have next week is the Medium Supply Crate Stash Box Plan, available for 1,000 gold. This plan allows you to craft a stash box that not only serves as a vital storage solution but also resembles a sturdy medium supply crate, blending functionality with the rugged aesthetic of the wasteland. I'd say more about it, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Stash box. Put your stuff in it. Look different from everyone else. Enough said, right? Let's move on to the questions. Something something 245 is looking for covert scout armor and the Hellfire armor power paint. My friend, I hope you picked up the paint at my big sale that ended today. Because I was selling it for 1,500 gold. I'll have the Enclave Medallion at Crater from September 16th to the 18th, and the Covert Scout Armor at Fort Atlas from September 23rd to 25th. If you miss those sales, I'll have them both at my big sale at Whitespring from October 3rd to the 7th. Some of you only had comments, thanking me for selling you the plans that let you make the weapons and armor you love, and I can only say that you are welcome. When someone takes a plan from my collection and uses it to create something that they love and rely on, it reinforces the very essence of what I do. Remember that if any of you have questions, just post them in the comments before Saturday to ensure they're included in the following week's video. Your engagement is invaluable, and I am thrilled that Noodle and Oscap have made it possible for me to finally talk to all of you directly. Creating these videos is a labor of love that takes days of hard work, dedication, and passion for the world of Fallout. If you appreciate the content and wish to support the channel, consider becoming a member on YouTube or Patreon. Or you can drop a super thanks right here on the video, like Vitemi did on Modus's video for the Atomic Shop last week. Your support directly contributes to the production of these detailed explorations of Appalachia and its treasures, and you'll get special rewards each month that you can't get anywhere else. For those who wish to show their enthusiasm in a more tangible way, you can purchase unique Fallout-themed art and clothing from the Gamer Aviator store. Not only will you be getting something special for yourself or as a gift for a fellow enthusiast, but you'll also be supporting the creative efforts behind these videos. Links to all of these locations can be found in the video description, or you can scan this QR code to visit our links page. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. This is Minerva, signing off. Thank you, Minerva, and thank all of you for tuning in to the new Galaxy News Network.
I am Marcia Synth. And I'm Four Dog. And until next time, stay safe out there, vault dwellers. <laughs> Do 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 do